You need a couple of things when you start rebuilding your operating system. You want to format F disk, blow everything off, start from scratch. I'm a big fan of long formats, but that's going to come in a second. There's two things you need to have. You have an operating system disk, which we have right here. On a Dell, any operating system that's similar to it, that's distributed by Dell, has the key in it. You take that thing, you pop in your computer, you won't have any problem. Worst case scenario, you'll have to go to the back of the computer or the side, look for that colorful little sticker and type that stuff in. You may actually have to call Microsoft, although I've never had to do that on a branded computer. If you do, it's not a big deal. Uh, you just go through a list of things on the screen. It walks you through it. It's very simple. We're using uh, a newer CD that I have, which is Microsoft Windows XP Professional Source Pack 3. The one that uh, we have here, the original source disk, is Source Pack 2. This is going to save us some time. Like I said, on a Dell, it's not a problem. On most computers, it's not going to be a problem. The second thing you need is you need to have the drivers. Just so happens this guy was bright, never even opened it. He's got his original DVD with all the drivers. This is going to come in real handy. If you needed to, you could go to Dell.com or the manufacturer's website and search for the drivers and download them, put them on a disk and have them ready. A lot of times you won't be able to get on the internet, you won't be able to see the video well, you'll end up with a little crunchy, terrible view if you don't have the drivers in advance. So, the next thing is, take your source media, put it into an optical drive if that's what it is, and boot your computer. And we've already started this with the boot process. This computer has a password in the BIOS for the boot. And in this case, it automatically sees the CD. You can press any key and go into boot. I want to show you another trick real quick, though. Let's just pretend that didn't work for us. In the boot process, you have an option of hitting F12. Right there. You want to look for these things up in like the top right corner. Again, we're going to have to type in the password. This thing's password protected. And then you get to choose which one to boot from. In our case, we wanted to choose CD-ROM. That's what we're trying to boot from. And it gives us the same prompt we had a second ago, boot from CD. You don't have to go into the BIOS and figure out how to reset uh, your boots. That's, that's time consuming. You just look around and see if you can hit your F12. A lot of times, most computers are already set to boot off the CD-ROM as a primary boot device anyway. This is going to take a while, so we're going to pause and come back when all these drivers are loaded. Go. So once all the drivers and stuff load up, you're going to then come to this screen in Windows XP. Uh, looks very similar in Vista. This, these screens are almost all the same back a uh, couple of operating systems back to 2000. Here's the thing you want to keep in mind. Down here at the bottom, if you have a RAID controller, or some funky hardware controller on your, your drives, your, your hard drive media. You're going to see a little thing pop up right here that says hit F6 to load third-party driver. What you're going to do is look for the F6 on your computer, tap that thing, because if you have a USB keyboard, which most modern Dell users are going to have, it's not going to see your keyboard until it loads the driver for the USB. So just keep tapping the, the F6. And then it'll ask you for the, the source media for that driver. 99% of the time, we'll refuse to take it from a CD. You'll have to have it on a floppy. So I suggest you get a USB floppy disk. You can go buy one at Office Max for like $20. Or uh, ask one of your nerd friends to, uh, to loan you theirs, because we all know you have to have one of those. Of course, if you had a nerd friend, you wouldn't be watching this video. Um, anyway, back to the information at hand. Uh, to set up XP, we press Enter. To repair it, hit R. And we're not wanting to repair it. We want to blow everything off and start from scratch. We're going to hit enter. It's going to come up with the uh, user agreement. You can just click on the F8. And we already have an old copy of Windows XP Pro. The entire C drive was used for that. And what I actually want to do here is I, I, I do not want to repair it. Boy, it really wants me to repair it. But I'm going to hit the escape button. And it's going to show me all the partitions. Now look at this. We have a little 55 megabyte partition. We have a, um, a 214,000 megabyte partition and another 23,000 megabyte partition and another this 8 megabyte partition at the bottom, the unpartitioned space. That's the space that NTFS requires to store the file system information. So you're never going to get rid of that. We can get rid of the rest of the stuff though. We're going to hit the D. It's going to tell us to hit an L to continue. 
and we're going to move down to the next partition space. You can't delete unpartitioned space. Hit the D. It's going to say something like, you're about to delete a really important partition. Are you sure? You're sure. Um, right here, delete this partition, press enter, or hit the enter button. Then we hit the L again. We got one more partition here. We're going to hit the D. We're going to hit the L. And we're totally done. All the partitions are gone. Now we're going to set up fresh partitions. Uh, in this case, do you want a single giant partition? Yeah. Okay, great. Just hit the C button, the letter C. It's going to automatically assume the size of the disk, where it's 238,000 plus megabytes. Uh, I think that's a 250 gigabyte drive, allegedly. Hit your enter button, let it choose it by default, or if you want, you can set up multiple partitions. Hit your enter button, and so we have one giant partition space. We got rid of all that junkware that came on the computer when it came from the factory. We're done with that, and we're going to click the enter button one more time to install Windows XP. Now, here's something really important. It may be tempting to do a quick NTFS file system format. Um, don't. Don't do that. I'll tell you one. Hard drives, when they get shipped, get bounced around. You can end up with divots and then little you know, microscopic divots over time. And a slow format or a full-blown format is going to look for those bad parts and map around them. It does not do that in a quick partition. In a quick partition, all it does is it marks point A, marks point B, and assumes the road is okay. There's potholes in the road, so map the potholes. We're going to go to the second one, we're going to hit the enter button, and we're going to wait a really, really long time. So, we're not going to touch anything when it gets done with the whole format, it installs all the files, You'll see it pops up. That's a typical thing in um, Dell CDs, and it's two instances of the uh, operating system boot. There's not actually two operating systems installed. If you see that, don't worry about it. So this is the first time that Windows is going to boot up. After the files have been copied to the hard drive, we've had a full format, which um, took a while. And now we're booting back up into Windows. There's going to be a couple of things you're going to click through in here. Mostly like network configuration, that sort of thing. Now, fortunately, because of the CD we're using, we already have Surge Pack 3, but you'll want to go ahead and immediately install Surge Pack 3 if you haven't done it already. And go through that update. Oh, the updates? Or just show it anyway. Or An exciting new look. Yeah. You can read this stuff while it's installing. One. So we've installed the NVIDIA driver for the video. Now we have really good resolution here. I want to immediately go to the network interface card. Uh, that's we're on a faster net connection. So that's our method of connecting to the internet. We're going to go ahead and install that driver. And the reason for installing the NIC is that I want to get access to the internet so I can do updates. I can install stuff. Oh, and whenever you have the option, you see drivers only, drivers and Intel Pro Set, yada yada, just install the drivers. You don't need all that extra garbage, unless you just like watching things take up resources. So we're installing the drivers for the network. I am going to restart the computer when we're done with this, just to make sure everything seeds properly. And um, it didn't ask me to. Well, let's see if we got an internet connection. First time you come up, you're going to go to Microsoft's first time run. There's MSN. And now we're on the internet and uh, we're good to go. We've got Source Pack 3 already installed, so it's relatively secure. We don't have to worry about it. I'm going to uh, run a couple of updates and I'm going to do a couple of small things before I install my antivirus program. Typically, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and go online right now and get you a good antivirus program. I would endorse somebody, um, I, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you who I'm using this week. I use Avast. Go to Avast.com for home use. It's free. It's lightweight. It has a script blocker for Internet Explorer, which will block 90% of the things you're going to accidentally pick up surfing the web. Now, the next time you see me, it's going to be uh, with the screen recording tool that I'm about to download and install on this computer.